Well, hey there, today I'm in the studio with Tony, the athletic chaplain at the University of Oregon. And I love today's title because we're talking about the one thing that every Christian athlete needs. What a great mm. clickbait mm. title. I can't wait to hear your answer to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are we talking about today? Well, let's, let's put it off for just a second. All right, let's, good. let's keep that clickbait going. And I, I want to start with a question that was posed to me yeah. um, several years ago uh, by a pastor that was in a message. And he said, what is the theme that you see on every page of the Bible? From mm. cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, what is a theme that you see on every page? And probably me, probably you're thinking love, yeah, peace. Yeah, high spiritual concepts, yeah, right, right. compassion. Yeah. And his answer, I think, was very true. Huh. And it surprised me. He said, struggle. Hmm. Struggle. And when we think about it, I, th I think that's very true. Yeah. We, we see a struggle of good and evil. We see actual battle in ancient Israelites. Mm -hmm. We see a struggle of, of flesh versus the spirit. Page after page after page, we see this tension, this adversity that we face, and this, this call to grow mm -hmm. and to struggle and to fight. Yeah. So, this, so when I turn on TV and I see these televangelists promising that if I would just send in a little more money that I'll have a nicer car, a better marriage, that all, that all of my struggles will go away. Yeah. Are you telling me that that's, they're missing something? It's, it's just not there. Yeah. It's not there. In fact, we are promised the exact opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says, in this life you will have trouble. Yeah. Now, he has overcome the world, but he, he promises us that in this life yeah. we will have trouble. Yeah. And I think as athletes, we get this. Like yeah. We know this, that every great athlete or every great dynasty faces adversity yeah. at some point. And, yeah. and what defines them is how they overcome that adversity, how they deal with that adversity. And, and I can promise, and I do this with our freshmen when they come in, I say, I promise you at some point this year, not just in your career, at this year you will face adversity, whether it's in the form of injuries, yeah. whether it's in the form of facing failure for maybe the first time yeah. in your life where you lose a match or a game or whatever else, right. or self-doubt. Um, every athlete deals with that on some level, yeah. and that there will be adversity. Sometimes it's with the coach. Coach just isn't playing me, whatever. You will face adversity. Okay, so we're ready now. Are we ready now? We're so ready. What, Let's bring it. With what is the one thing then that every Christian athlete needs to overcome adversity and struggle if this is just a normal thing for us? Yeah. I call it grit. And I know that doesn't sound very spiritual or that profound, mm -hmm. but... I love it because it's, the, it's something that as athletes we know we have to have. Mm -hmm. It's this toughness, this, this perseverance. And, yeah. and again, it may not sound very spiritual, but it's there. It's in the scripture. Yeah. It emerges when we begin to understand God's call in our lives. And I think it's so profound and well, so important. But aren't Christians supposed to be meek and humble and gentle as a lamb? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. But I think, and let's just jump into it. I think there's a couple yeah. things we need to understand. Um, that yes, those things are all true of us, mm -hmm. but adversity is going to come. Mm -hmm. the, the, this, these trials are going to come. Again, Jesus promises us. So why run away from it? Why try to mm -hmm. avoid it? They're going to come in our lives. Even in sports. Even in sports. Yeah. It's, it, it's, a great, it's a great analogy for life in that sense. Yeah. But we've got to remember we carry the spirit of the living God mm -hmm. in our soul that he goes with us, that in fact we are called to reflect his image, and he is not a weak God. Mm. Yes, he is humble and he is, a, he is peaceful, but he is not a weak God. He is a gritty mm -hmm. God. He mm -hmm. is a God that calls us to stand firm and that, that adversity is going to come in our lives, but he says, I am giving you everything that you need to stand up under this adversity. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you peace, and I'm giving you perseverance, and I'm giving you strength, and that I will continue to give you these things. I will continue to, to give you grit so that you can reflect me and that you can face adversity head on and that you can handle way more than you think mm. because my spirit is in you, mm. because I go with you. I go with you into battle. Again, page after page after page, we see this concept of struggle, and then we always see the promise. I will be, you. I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will hold you up. I will give you the grit that you need to overcome. So it's not really to the credit of the individual believer that they've got this. Maybe that's the key for people is to think it, this isn't, the source isn't you. No. It's not just be no. gritty or work harder. No. The source is who's in you. Who's in you. Yeah. yeah. The source. Where do you derive your, yeah. where do you derive your grit? Because yeah. I think we can fake it for a while and there's certain situations that we, you know, that non-believers can show that grit, but true grit 
deep mm -hmm. grit, spiritual grip, only comes in, a, in that, that connection with Christ. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that suffering, struggle, is not a bad, that as Christian athletes, we shouldn't look at that as a bad thing? Like, yeah. oh, this terrible thing happened to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got to remember our God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. So these things are in our lives because he allows them to be there. Yeah. And so, no, they're not a bad thing. In fact, James says, in James 1, he says, consider it pure joy, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, when you face trials of all kinds. Mm -hmm. and that's crazy. It is that's crazy. crazy talk right there. Yep. Well, they, consider it pure joy. Why would we ever consider adversity, trials, failure, injuries, whatever it may be, pure joy? Yeah. Because that's how we grow. That's right. We get that as athletes. We yeah. know that we get stronger, we get better, we get better condition by pushing our bodies beyond what's comfortable, beyond the, our previous limits. So yeah. we get it as athletes, but it's so true spiritually, emotionally, physically, in every area of life that this is how we grow. Yeah. And, and we, look at a, we look at a tree outside, and any tree that has grown big, that is old and has been there a long time, mm -hmm. has faced adversity. Mm -hmm. It's faced drought, it's faced <laughs> storms, mm -hmm. and it overcame that adversity. Its roots went deep. Maybe a limb was broken off, but it, but it grew back stronger, or whatever it may be. That mm -hmm. tree is strong because it's faced adversity, stood, went through it, had the grit to live through it, mm -hmm. and is now stronger. So, and, Tony, we, we've got some athletes watching this saying, all right, you, you convinced me this is the one thing that I really need. I need more of this in my life. I'm a follower of Jesus. Before we had, turn this video off, how, how does someone develop it? What would you say to a Christian watching saying, I want to develop more grit. Yeah. I need more of that in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the, what's yeah. their part? So I would say, sometimes we look at Jesus like a candy machine. Hmm. That we just walk to him, we put a coin in, and we walk away with candy. Mm -hmm. Jesus isn't a candy machine. He's a fire. Hmm. And that we get, we derive these things in our lives because we're close to him. We get warm because we're close to the fire. Hmm. And that if, if, if God's spirit is where we derive this, this grit from, and we get more of it by being close to Him, hmm. by, by communing with the Spirit of God that's in our soul, by seeking Him, by spending time in our Scripture, by developing our spiritual life and getting to know Him deeper. And these things will permeate who we are and will become more and more, again, who we are and what the world sees and what, what we believe to be true about ourselves because the Spirit permeates us deeper and deeper. That's so good. Well, you heard it from Tony. If you need more of that one thing in your life, you, if you need more grit, encourage you to do those things. Don't forget, use those questions below. Talk about this with a mentor or, or in your huddle, and we'll see you in the next video.